This page is dedicated to the memory of Stefan Marinov and his device titled the Magnetic Vortex Hyperionization Device. It was reported that he was working on it, which means working with a real device, not just, uh, and then up until one month before his sudden unexpected death. Here are the posts. These posts are very interesting. We're going to review the physics and science and the claims in the posts. Stefan Marinov posted a few messages about the MagVid device on various news groups on Usenet during 1995. Instead of using his real name, he decided to impersonate a fictional U.S. Air Force officer who worked at Groom Lake and other locations and projects for 20 years. Probably the reason for doing this too was to attract more attention for this MagVid device and maybe to protect his identity. In my opinion, this was the wrong approach because he was leaking information without associating it to himself in public. So he was not protecting his identity. But on the opposite, his identity was more in danger. So here are some images talking about the four rings. Kind of reminds me right off the bat of quadrupole oscillations. Reminds me of the quadrupole oscillations uh, that both Dave Rossi and uh, Gary Stevenson spoke about. Reminds me of both of these. So let me just read off the first thing here. The magnetic vortex. How, how this thing is supposed to work. Conventional effects. Production of high voltage. Rotating magnetic field spins a compass needle. Unconventional effects. Electromagnetic Doppler effects. Hello. Hello there. <laughs> Did somebody say electromagnetic Doppler effects? Now you are speaking my language. Electromagnetic Doppler effects are exactly what we were talking about. We're going to probably be referencing this live stream a lot. Maybe I need to link it down there. The free electron relativistic X-ray laser. Nuclear pumped. Man, it's got a lot of words in it. Nuclear pumped relativistic free electron X-ray laser. Ooh, try saying that three times fast. Because the secret of these effects are relativistic effects, where if I were to take like two walls and have the walls oscillate inward and outward, these are the relativistic effects. That's what it's talking about right here when they're talking about electromagnetic Doppler effects. The Doppler effect is if two objects are moving away from one another, either their waves are going to expand or they're going to contract. Right? Doppler effects. So right there, there's your answer. EM. So right away, I'm already pretty uh, high on this because I've already seen something now that is right in line with what we've read about how to produce these relativistic gravity effects. Well, one of them is the electromagnetic Doppler effect. This is how you can potentially manipulate zero-point energy. This is how you can manipulate gravity through manipulating zero-point energy. The other unconventional effect is time dilation. And this makes sense. Resultant time compression of EM radiation, resultant decrease in perceived inertia and mass, resultant greater perceived acceleration with lesser force. So this is the thing, is that what happens with the physics is that the properties that we see become real. The perceived the perception of the decrease in inertia, the perception of the decrease in mass is real. Release my left hand and holding only with my right hand at the end of the shaft, I'll try to lift it up over my head. This is a 40 pound, 19 kilogram flywheel. Ready? Here we go, three, 40 two, pound flywheel. These are lifting with one hand. Beautiful. Let's go again. So why was that so easy for Veritasium? Because the perceived effects are real. This is the thing. This is the psyop, guys, about gravity manipulation. There's nothing special about it. Gravity is just a pressure force. Anything that makes you feel lighter, if it literally makes you feel lighter, it is literally making you lighter. Because gravity is not some special, unique force. It's just a byproduct of mass and energy. This is why when you're looking at even things like acoustic levitation, anything that's levitating, that's anti-gravity.
That's gravity manipulation. You're, that is the same exact effect. Scale that effect up. Now you're flying around. So how? How do you scale those effects up? How do you scale? Well, we just watched Veritasium spin a weight around, and the weight is spinning, and for some reason, it's just lighter. This is the secret. It's actually so absurd. It's absurd when you think about it as a normie, and this is why the normies never think about it. Because they just think, oh, well, that's just normal physics. Yes, gravity manipulation is normal physics. So shielding effect on the inside. So this is interesting. A shielding effect on the inside by ablate spheroids of ionized particles and electrons outside of the device. Anything that comes in contact with the rotating ionization cloud would heat and get swirled. So what it's saying there is that you can use this to make a swirling energy field around this object and then whatever's inside has now got a shield around it because anything that tries to get to it gets stuck in the swirling vortex the extreme electrical ionization of matter in this experiment produces many anomalous effects doppler effects time dilation bandwidth compression there are three fields we can use to set up an electric vacuum inside of an experiment by pump, pumping electrons into an external electric sheet. Oh, boy. <laughs> Pretty much explaining right here the free electron relativistic laser right there. When they're talking about our electrons moving freely in these lasers, it's pretty much like talking about pumping electrons into an external sheet. So right here, when I'm reading this, it almost sounds just like fusion, just like these electron lasers that they use to produce fusion right there. And they can use static magnetic fields, alternating magnetic fields, or pulsating magnetic fields. Imagine a permanent magnet with a north pole coming out of your computer monitor. Its flux lines can be imagined as a large number of X marks around your screen. An electron moves in the plane of the monitor from left to right. As the electron cuts the lines of the magnetic flux, Lorentz forces deflect it downward. The electron actually spirals clockwise into the plane of the computer monitor with radius mv divided by qb with b in Teslas and other magnetic fields. If the electron came from the opposite direction, it would spiral in the same direction clockwise as we see it so there you go what it's saying right there is that if an electron passes across your screen and there's a magnetic field on your screen that electron is going to start moving in a vortex motion clockwise vortex motion towards the screen itself so that's what it's saying is that magnetic fields fundamentally alter the flow of electrons undeniable Lorentz forces dry, uh, derives from static magnetic fields when there's relative motion between the magnetic field and the electron. No force acts on the electron when its motion is parallel to the lines of the magnetic flux. Whoa. Whoa, whoa, whoa. There's a little hack zores right there, guys. One of the first scientific papers we looked into was called force-free time harmonic plasmoids. And in that, they were trying to get the electric, the electric and magnetic fields to be parallel. If you add your electric and magnetic fields to be parallel, you create a force-free condition. And I think that's what this is talking about right here. If your electron is parallel, then you don't feel any force whatsoever. So now this is where we start messing around with the geometry, geometry of our plasmas. So what they were doing is they were messing around with the geometry of the plasmas and they realized they can create static magnetic fields. If you manipulate the geometry of your plasma, just like this, you can actually control the motion of the plasma almost perfectly. Uh, this static magnetic field is conservative, performs no work. Uh, the relevant the equation is E equals the change in the magnetic field over time. And since the flux density is static, then the change in magnetic field is zero. The curl is zero and the field by definition is conservative. No work is done on the electrons. So we deduce that the electrons spiral but maintain the same velocity and kinetic energy.
Static electrons can be accelerated by magnetic fields. In the case of the curl, E is non-zero. Electrons must absorb energy or must be accelerated by the time variant magnetic field. This case is actually the same as the above case, but the electron current changes the coil producing the magnetic flux. This flux expands or collapses. There is still a relative motion. The electrons still experience the same Lorentz force. For example, sending a pulsating uh, current instead of a direct current through the same coil in the same direction causes the same spiraling effect on static electrons as the static magnetic field had on the moving electrons. Sending alternating current through the coil causes periodic reversals of the electrons. The field around the coil can be given by this parameter. It says here, the electric lines form concentric circles around the coil. Okay, so two methods exist to produce the electric sheet outside of the experiment. Both require pumping of electrons from inside the experiment into a sheet of electricity outside. The first method does this from a central magnetic pole. A strong static magnetic field is set up and PDC, which is the pulsating direct current, is set up oppositively through the pole to set up a circular electric lines around it. Electrons are accelerated circularly around the pole and as soon as they move, they experience outward centripetal deflection. Each electron, which leaves the center of the experiment, leaves the positive electric hole. And so there also must be an internal electric centrifugal force. So what he's describing here is how the motion of the electrons are manipulated by the magnetic fields. And essentially what it's getting at here is that if we can, we can manipulate the electrons using the magnetic fields to create a particle accelerator particle accelerator. In fact, what I'm hearing here being described sounds very much like what's probably in the middle of the orbs in the MH370 videos. We're using these very powerful electromagnetic fields to manipulate the electrons, and we basically solve the math to make them be perfectly efficient. Conservation of energy. And this is part of the reason why the orbs don't really look like they're, they look static. Like you can see this distinct heat signature in them. Because they've solved the math and they figure out, oh, this is how we can make our plasma to be stable. This perfectly stable plasma that we're producing here. So that is your very, very high level. Like that, the idea of electromagnetism and using magnetism to manipulate electrons is not just limited to metals. It's not just limited to magnetic motors. That also applies for plasma. Plasma itself is stripping the electrons from the ions. And now, once you've figured out that, oh, the electrons follow this predictable vortex motion going clockwise every single time, now you can predict the motion of the electrons in your plasma. And what is the secret of fusion in plasma? The secret of fusion in plasma is how do you confine the plasma? How do you contain it? Well, if you know how it's going to move, <laughs> if you know and can control how it moves, then you can confine it pretty easily. This is the reason why fusion has been suppressed. Because the control of plasma in this way that's needed for fusion to happen is classified under national security. So this is supposedly Stefan Marinov wrote this email or message. It's kind of unclear where it showed up. 1995, though. He's going to say, I tell how. Excitation and accelerated time, less inertia, gravity, and mass are all one in the same thing. Wow. Wow. Right off the bat. All of those things are zero-point energy. Ships may travel hundreds of times faster than light without time dilation, and energy needed for this is very little. Communications are also faster than light. I am getting goosebumps here because this is true. This is true. This, And we only learned this in the last year. We learned this in the last year. Because we learned that faster than light communication is possible. And it's not going to cause this huge amount of time dilation. We can control the Mars rover from Earth. The only way that's possible in real time, controlling the Mars rover from Earth in real time, the only way that's possible is by what he's saying right here. 
You're saying not only is faster than light communication already happening, quantum communication, as we would call it, but it works faster than the speed of light. And you can basically jump through a portal and be in Mars and then jump back through the portal and you're back here again. And it's not 20 minutes later. EEG waves from one to 60 cycles are telepathy, but they come from fast time. So they are compressed in time or bandwidth. Ordinary radios are not quick enough to detect the information. All we detect is the 60 cycle signal at light speed, but information tra inside travels faster than light. This I don't quite perfectly understand, but it also seems to be connected to this idea of quantum entanglement and explain quantum entanglement as an electromagnetic field. Man left to himself dreams of a paradise where technology and nature are in perfect harmony where he is immortal and free of disease, needs, and wants. And this can be done directly from mind to product this very day using light lines. I don't know what that means. As someone who has worked on the B-2 bomber and its more advanced cousins in the Air Force for 20 years, I can tell you that the whole story is unbelievable. 20 hours is too conservative a time estimate for complete explanation. Some crafts we do use electromagnetism to nullify gravity and even extract hidden information from EEG waves. But these are not deployed and will not be until they are needed. So what, what does Stefan Marinov actually do? We're going to have to look that up afterwards because I don't, I don't can't find anything wrong with what he's saying here. I can even see how you might be able to like use quantum encryption to crack information, which is essentially what he's talking about here. I'm talking about extracting hidden information. I mean, this is before quantum computers were even believed to be a thing. So this is essentially saying that we can use quantum encryption and crackion. Uh, we can break any encryption using quantum technologies. This is basically what this is saying right here. They pump electricity from inside themselves into a sheet of electricity some distance away, exactly as the Earth's positive ground and the ionosphere on a negative sheet. Wow. I mean, this sounds exactly like teleporting an object from one point to the other. One is the positive charge and one is the minus charge. The same way where the Earth is a positively charged ion and then the, it has its voltage gets created the further away you get from it. And also it says they will not be deployed until they are needed. This is the real thing. The only way for the MH370 videos to make sense is that we've got this technology, but we only deploy it when it's actually needed. We're not breaking it out for the Ukraine war. We don't care about Ukrainians if they die. We're not breaking it out to fight Hamas. We're only breaking this technology out if we need it. And in the last 30 years, we haven't really needed it. This sheet bends parallel radar waves around the craft like a water droplet in a rainbow. OMG, there it is right there. There it is right there. Remember when Trump said that they can't detect our submarines? They That our plasma is stealth? Because... The light waves bend right around the object, which means that you can't even detect it. It's like the object is not even there. And this is exactly what is happening when the plane teleports. The plane is teleporting. It's undetectably moving from one location to the next. It's the same physics, just scaled up. Scaling up this physics have light bend entirely around the craft. In fact, what does it say in the very next line here? And it says, this is a relatively simple and straightforward effect. And it is what Einstein was attempting in Project Rainbow, also known as the Philadelphia experiment. Boom. It is. This is what, this is what Einstein was trying to do. They were trying to, they were trying to shield a ship from electromagnetic fields. And they accidentally figured out, oh, this is actually warping space-time when we do this. If we turn up our degaussers, our, our, our Tesla, super high, we're actually manipulating space-time. The Air Force feels it has nothing to worry about because nobody would believe these things. Even though they require no special admission 
but are based entirely on relativity and simple electromagnetic laws. Boom! There it is!